My name is marie of Morin. I teach in the philosophy department at the University of Alberta. I've been teaching at the University of Alberta for eight years. I mostly teach uh, Introduction to Philosophy, Values in Society, and Existentialism. The Value in Society class is an introduction to philosophy that's focused on the question of how to live and how to live well with others. Uh, existentialism is a very popular class, and uh, the easiest way to describe it is we think about the meaning of life. It's really a class about where we reflect on our own existence and whether our existence has meaning or not. The uh, existentialism class tends to be uh, about 40 to 50 students, but the introduction uh, class that I teach is called a super section. And depending on the terms, it will have between 150 and 250 students. Uh, yes, I receive an award for teaching uh, in large classes. It's an award that rotates between the Faculty of Arts and the Faculty of Science. And in 2012, it was awarded in the Faculty of Art. And I was nominated by my department uh, because the large class that I've taught uh, now for the fourth time uh, has been very successful uh, as a large class. I actually really uh, enjoy teaching large classes uh, because it reminds me a little bit of uh, performance. So I did the degree in classical music before I became a philosopher. And so I really enjoy the, um, the performance aspect of teaching in front of a, good, uh, a large group. When I was assigned the large class for the first time, a lot of my colleagues told me that it would be challenging and that I would have to change uh, the way that I uh, teach, the way that I approach a student, the way that I present material. And one of my uh, challenge was to not change too much the way in which I uh, relate to my student, despite the size. And so I tried, to, the first thing I had to change is that I had to use PowerPoints uh, rather than the board, uh, which require that the structure of the class be a little bit uh, more strict because I have to go through the points in a certain order. But I still try to make um, the slide flexible enough so that I would be able to engage in discussion and to let things go a little bit and give the students some space to engage with the, the questions we were discussing. So I try to not change too much and that was probably the, the biggest challenge. The thing that I learned about uh, using PowerPoint or that I found successful is to rather than um, show the PowerPoint, uh, so show the lines on the PowerPoint slide and then explain them, I will go in the explanation first so that the student's attention is focused on me and then I use the PowerPoint to review the points we have covered. And so one of the things I will do is often I will, before even I, I, I go from one slide to the next, I will um, engage in a discussion with the student and I will ask them to name things that they recognize from the reading or and then we will uh, have a discussion and then I will go through the slide uh, as a way of reviewing uh, the material. One of the things I don't like about using PowerPoint is that you have to dim the lights and dimming the light uh, especially at 10 or 11 in the morning uh, is, is not very good for the interaction with the student and it has happened uh, this semester a couple of times that the computer was down and so I couldn't use the PowerPoint. I still have my PowerPoints, so I had a printout of the PowerPoints, but the student could uh, look it up on their computer, but they could not see it on the screen, and so I turn on the lights. And the difference in uh, the awakeness of, of the student, and also of myself, was quite amazing. So one of the things I would like to change is change the way in which maybe I use the PowerPoint so that I can also uh, have the lights on and uh, have them be more awake and also just see them better, especially the people at the back. Now another thing that I've uh, started doing is not using the microphone. And it's more demanding. Uh, the class is only 50 minutes, so I can uh, sustain the, the level at which I have to speak for 50 minutes if I don't have a call. So it is more demanding not to use the microphone, but I find that I'm more, um, that I'm, or I find that when I don't use the microphone, uh, my, my presence is bigger because I have to project more. So my movements are bigger and I, um, I think that I'm, more, I'm just more alive for the student than if I rely on um, the microphone to project my voice. Well, the first way in which I try to uh, foster interaction in the classroom is by asking very simple uh, yes, no question 
And I try to make this question not so much about uh, content or uh, answers relative to question about the material, but more about uh, intuitions that the student might have. So I'll pose very um, general philosophical questions. So my favorite one, which I did the first uh, day of class, is uh, a thought experiment that we call the experience machine. And so I asked my student, assuming that they all want to be happy, whether if there were a machine that would give them only happiness experiences, whether they would want to willingly be plugged in the machine. By just asking them to raise their hand whether they uh, think that they would or think that they wouldn't, uh, I've already made them uh, interact or be present physically in the classroom with others. And then we, it creates the feeling that we are all there together, we all belong to the same community, and we're trying to think through these issues together. And that does not require that they speak. And so everybody is normally more comfortable at the beginning just raising their hand. Now, of course, the follow-up question is always, why did you say that? Why did you have a reticence about that? If the discussion is framed right, it is always easy to have uh, a discussion in the lecture hall because there is always going to be people who want to talk. And so it is more a challenge to keep the discussion uh, short, keep the discussion on point, but it is never a challenge to actually have uh, people wanting to engage. So one of the challenges about having discussions with 250 students is that often I don't have time to uh, go to everybody. And often I will feel that after two or three minutes, five minutes, uh, I need to move on and cover a new topic. Sometimes I will feel like there's still a lot of people who want to talk and want to share uh, their thoughts with the rest of the class. And so I will move the discussions. I will stop the discussion in class, but I will always let them know that uh, the discussion will be moved to the uh, online platform that we're using so that they can continue to, uh, to discuss and so that to make sure that everybody has a chance to um, say what they wanted to say and to also uh, engage with others. Now, of course, I will monitor the, the discussion as it is unfolding uh, on the online platform. The other thing that I try to do is move around in the classroom and especially to look left and right um, every five or 10 minutes when I think about it. Uh, also to uh, try to take questions from the back as much as I can. Uh, even though one of the challenge of a large class is that when students speak from the back, I don't always hear them. And so I will have to walk closer to them and then come back to the front and repeat the, their answer uh, for the whole class. I think that the first uh, thing I would say to a new instructor who's teaching a large class is to not be too intimidated by it and to uh, remain natural and remain themselves and engage their student uh, like they do in smaller classes. In a small classroom, uh, the difference is that you get to know your student. So most of my students uh, I don't really know. Uh, I don't know their names. Sometimes I recognize their faces from one uh, lecture to the next. But uh, sometimes I, if they make a good point in the lecture, I'll remember uh, for a couple of weeks. But most of the time, they, they remain anonymous. So I do try to engage them as much as I can. But they still, um, we still don't re really develop any person, personal uh, rapport. And so in a sense, it does give me a little bit more freedom because I don't feel as um, vulnerable in front of them as, as an instructor. Another piece of advice I would give to someone who's new to teaching uh, a large class is to really structure each lecture so that it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, so a sort of narrative arc, so that the student feel like we have covered everything, that we plan to cover every uh, lecture, even if it's not the case. Uh, so, that, so it does require a little bit more preparation and structure and flexibility as uh, you're lecturing, just to make sure that uh, nothing is left out or you're not rushing or skipping or that you can't really reorganize anything midway or change the Wednesday lecture or because there's also assistance and uh, PowerPoints and uh, you know reading question and because everything is so big and so it has to be organized and so you have to know in advance what you're going to do.